Boom. Elena. Elena for Bell. Elena for Bell. She says, I have a question. Is different how you sing in studio mic than the normal live mic? No. <laughs> Elena Borbell says, I have a question. That's good English. Elena. And then she goes into, is different how you sing in studio mic than the normal live mic? No. Question mark. Perfect example of what I was talking about. We know what she's asking. Okay. Translation, are handheld live microphones different than um, big diaphragm recording microphones? This is one of that I have. This is, by the way, this is uh, the Jay-Z Black Hole. I'm going to get some light on that. Yeah, there it is. Jay-Z Black Hole. This is a recording microphone. It sounds amazing. These guys make handmade microphones in Latvia. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was showing you guys their handheld, which is the HH1. All right, anyways. Yelena wants to know, what's the difference between mics like this and mics like this? What's the difference? Okay. Be careful there. Well, the, there's many, many differences. Uh, the, uh, the microphones have two totally different applications. They're made for completely different kinds of singing and completely different context and use. Right? Microphones like this are designed for live use. This is a, we, we might call this, this is a live handheld Okay, live handheld microphone. By the way, this is my new vintage mic. Purchased it from mycock.com. It is a night, it's like made in the 70s. It's from a company called AKG in Austria. I'm using it for the first time today. Fun? No. I collect these old vintage mics. But it doesn't matter. It could be an old vintage mic, it could be a newer one. This is a live handheld dynamic microphone. It is designed for live usage. Okay, it, which is what we're doing today. All right, so I have a live microphone. Yay! All right, a live microphone because I'm live in front of you guys. This is what I would use singing in a club. This is what I would use on Fridays when I'm training with my students. That's a live application. Pretty simple. Live microphones tend to not be as sensitive as the bigger diaphragm recording microphones. Live microphones are designed to be able to take a drop from time to time. I'm not going to drop this, but they tend to be uh, more like uh, 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 hammers. You know, they're, they're, they're designed to be rugged eyes. They're designed to, to be knocked around and dropped and all kinds of things. They're, they're um, frontline workhorse microphones, okay? Um, and a live microphone is also designed to not feedback since live microphones are in front of big PA speakers in jam rehearsal rooms and monitors and things. They they are they're um, exposed to lots of environments that could create feedback. All right. So a handheld mic is designed to different ways to be, to lower the chance for feedback. One of those techniques is, by the way, is to create radiators you'll see this on old mics new mics a lot of my companies so you have the top up here where you sing into the top okay but any microphone that has a lot of microphones sort of have this 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 open space underneath and it's designed in different ways okay and this is like a radiator this is where we where we um, where the sound can escape and get out and I don't. I'm, I'm. I'm no super mic expert. I'm just an expert at using them, but not at their technology. But this is to cut down on feedback from the floor monitors. All right. So 
Handheld live mic made for live situations. Tends to be durable, so you can drop it and won't break it. Tends to have certain elements built into the design that's designed to keep it from feeding back because the company and the designers and the engineers understand that this is something that's going to be walking. People are going to be walking in front of PA speakers and monitors and stuff. All right? Okay. Oh, and inexpensive. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, they're inexpensive. Can you record with a handheld mic? Yes, definitely you can. It's typically not recommended, but some people do that. I've done it before. The benefit of recording with a handheld mic is it might have a certain, maybe a vintage or an old school color to it that you want to capture in your recording, all right? Um, and uh, you can kind of get the benefit of, like, like when you're recording, you sort of have the benefit of the physical movement, the freedom of holding a handheld mic like this. That's would, would be one of the benefits of recording with one of these, but don't misunderstand me. It's not really made for recording, and I'm not necessarily recommending it. Bigger microphones, or what we call big diaphragm microphones, like this Jay-Z Black Hole, are designed to stay put, locked down on a secure mechanism with a reflection filter that goes around it, that's what that big, that little, that, that wall around the microphone is called a reflection filter. The reflection filter is used to block out ambient sound in the room, okay? When you're making a recording, you want a clean signal. You want it to only be the voice and the, the elements in the microphone, microphone design that are supposed to be there to go to the tape, to go to the recording. You don't want the sound of your voice and the, and the lovely coloration of the microphone plus a little tiny bit of sound bouncing off the walls and the floors. You don't want that, bound, that, that ambient noise coming from the room when you're recording, all right? So they build these reflection filters, right? Inside the reflection filter is a, is a large diaphragm microphone. They tend to be expensive. They tend to be far more fragile, uh, they tend to be condensers, um, and um, there's you know, different technologies, uh, tube, tube mics, uh, they're all sort of fragile protocols. Um, if you move that microphone, if I take that microphone off that stand, okay, and I go somewhere, it's not dangling around on a billy club ring, okay, you know, you, it's not what you do with that microphone. That microphone, you carefully take it off and you carefully lay it down in a ruggedized box and you clamp it and you make sure it's shut and it's warm and it's cozy in there and it's fuzzy inside and you and you wipe off all the hand oil. You, you take really special care of these recording microphones. All right. Uh, oh, by the way, they're, they're more sensitive. Uh, they pick up more nuances and tiny details in your voice sort of things that you want when you're recording, okay? You would never take a big diaphragm recording microphone that's designed as, like that to be kind of locked down onto a mic stand with a reflection filter. You would never take that microphone and hold it in your hand and, and like try to, try to use it as a live mic. I've seen people do that, new students, like, okay, you need a microphone, great. And, you know, we fire up the, 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 the call, and I'm looking at someone, and they're holding a recording mic in their hand. You don't do that. That's just, don't do that. It's embarrassing. It would be ridiculous, okay? So, so if you're looking for microphones, you need two microphones. You need this for your training and your singing in the club, and then you need a good, a good big diaphragm sensitive microphone with a reflection filter for home recording. I hope that answers your question. All right.